This half head model of the brain can be a little intimidating for some students in the beginning, but what we're going to do is divide this into small groups of threes, and it'll not only make it a little bit more chunk size to digest, it actually makes it a lot easier to understand. So we're going to start with this corpus callosum, which is this first little white patch in the top here. Below that is the septum pellucidum. Now the septum pellucidum, like this septum in your nasal sinus, divides a right and left space. The space on the left coming out towards you would be the left lateral ventricle. If we poked a hole through the septum pellucidum, we'd actually go into the right lateral ventricle. Ventricles are where cerebrospinal fluid is flowing. Below that three, corpus callosum, septum pellucidum, and fornix, there's another space. That space is the third ventricle. We have a little purple patch here which represents choroid plexus. Choroid plexus hangs from the top of the third ventricle and that's what's actually going to produce our cerebrospinal fluid, our fluid for the brain. Below the third ventricle with its choroid plexus, fluid's going to drain down this little canal here which is called the aqueduct of Sylvius otherwise known as the cerebral aqueduct. And it's going to drain cerebrospinal fluid into this other space, which is called the fourth ventricle. So our second three is third ventricle with choroid plexus, cerebral aqueduct, and fourth ventricle. Our third three is called the diencephalon, and it's this little area from here to here, right in the center. And it starts with the, T-H-E, starts with this oval shape, that is the thalamus. The thalamus has this small dot represented here, which is called the intermediate mass on the thalamus. So T-H-E, we have thalamus. We have the hypothalamus, there's our H. The hypothalamus is part of the infundibulum, which is the stalk, that actually goes to the pituitary gland. Now T-H-R-E is actually above and posterior to that, it's the epi thalamus because it's higher than the hypothalamus. The epithalamus is part of the pineal gland right here. So we have T thalamus, H hypothalamus, and E epithalamus, and that's our third three. Below the diencephalon, we have the brainstem. The brainstem has three parts to it. The top area, imagine this would actually go all the way across, is called the midbrain. And this is not well represented here, but there would be four bumps right back here. The two on top are called the superior colliculi. The bottom two bumps are the inferior colliculi, and all four of them together are called the corpora quadrigemina. And those are all part of the posterior aspect of the midbrain. The next part, we have midbrain. We now have a round little ball here on the front. This is called the pons, midbrain, pons, and our third, you can see a little swollen area in the front. That area is called the, the uh, medulla oblongata, and that is our third part of the brain stem, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. There are three more structures left over. They're kind of randomly spaced, but it happened to work out into three. In the back here, this little organ is called the cerebellum, and the cerebellum is, uh, comes from the term little brain. It's also got this little bush or tree-like looking structure in it. That's called the arbor vitae. You think of arbor as arbor day or tree day, and vitae comes from vital. So that actually means the tree of life. Next, up above this pituitary gland is the optic chiasm, and the optic chiasm is where the optic nerves from the right and left side are crossing over because they cross from the left eye to the right brain and the right eye to the left brain. So that's the cross over the optic chiasm. And then up above the corpus callosum, this particular gyrus right here is called the cingulate gyrus. Um, it also has a cingulate sulcus up above it, but no, the cingulate gyrus up above the corpus callosum.